Okay, so now we're going to talk a bit about consensus on Corda. And consensus and Corda split into two buckets. We've got verification consensus and uniqueness consensus. Verification concerns whether an update to the ledger is valid or not, and uniqueness concerns whether an update is unique in that it has it tried to double spend another state on, on the ledger. So are all the input states referenced in that transaction? Are they unique? Have they been used before? So firstly, we're going to talk about verification consensus. So if you recall, verification consensus involves reaching certainty that a a transaction has been signed by all of the peers uh, listed in the commands, uh, all of the public keys that are listed in, in the commands by the transaction proposer, all of the, the, the parties associated with those keys should uh, sign the transaction. And we also need to make sure that the uh, transaction satisfies the constraints defined in the contract code. So only if the transaction satisfies the constraints in the contract code and it's been signed by all required peers, then can we say it's a, a valid update that can be committed to the ledger. However, there's, a, there's another step required that we haven't necessarily talked about too much yet, and that is that there may be a party that needs to verify a transaction that wasn't necessarily involved in the creation of that, that transaction. That is to say that they weren't a required signer on that transaction, yet uh, they still mean, may need to see that transaction and verify it. And we're going to talk a bit about why that is the case now. For newly proposed transactions, verification consensus is only performed by uh, the peers involved. However, you know, de depending on uh, what type of states are involved in a transaction, the, the transaction involving those states may actually need to be seen by some other parties that weren't necessarily involved in the original transaction. And this is why we say transactions propagate around the network on a need-to-know basis. Hang on, who else needs to see my transaction? So, and why do they need to see it? There must be a good reason for this. Before we uh, talk, talk about that, it's worth mentioning that there's a class of states that represent on ledger issued assets, such as cash or stocks or bonds, and so states that represent a claim on a, on, on a peer. So if you, ha if you hold a cash date on Corda, it's a claim against the cash issuer, such that you can redeem that cash date for some actual cash. Likewise, if you hold a bond state, it's a claim upon the, the issuer of the bond for, for you to redeem that state for the uh, original principal investment. If you hold one of these one of these states representing a claim, uh, you need to be confident that you have a valid claim on the original issuing party. Because if you if you ever get into a dispute with, with that party such that your, your claim is contested, then you need to be able to confidently prove that you can demonstrate that th this claim is valid and it was one that was uh, originally issued by the issuer in question. So let's say that Alice has some cash representing £10 issued by Charlie, then if Bob receives a transaction proposal from Alice to settle the £10 IOU with this £10 issued by Charlie, then Bob, uh, not only would he verify the transaction uh, that Alice is proposing, uh, he would actually have to verify some previous transactions as well involving the, the cash issued by, by Charlie. So so if, um, if, if Bob didn't verify the, the previous transactions, he, he wouldn't be able to uh, completely ascertain whether that the £10 of cash as an input state to the, to the transaction that Alice has proposed, he wouldn't be able to ascertain whether that £10 is an actual claim uh, on Charlie, the, the issuer. When a peer or party on the network is ever presented with a, with a, a transaction containing an input state that is some, some uh, fungible issued asset on, on Ledger, they need to verify all of the previous transactions concerning that, that state. And, and this actually needs to happen recursively all the way back to the, the, the transaction where um, this, uh, uh, this asset, this on ledger issued asset was originally issued. And if uh, throughout this process, if any transactions are invalid, then the proposed transaction concerning that, that asset can, cannot be accepted. So let's walk through a, a little example. Uh, Alice is settling the £10 IOU. So, so we have the IOU as an input and we have no uh, IOU as the output because Alice is fully settling the IOU with £10 of cash. She's changing the owner of the cash from Alice to Bob. Uh, when Alice proposes and signs this transaction, says it to Bob, then what, what Bob would do is he would take the input state reference for, for this cash date, and then he would go he would go to, to Alice and he would say, please, can you can you give me the, the transaction that contains the out, this, this cash output state? And of course, Alice would, Alice would respond with the actual transaction. It just so happens that this is a transaction between uh, Alice and Dan, where Alice swaps a bond for some cash. So, so the cash which Alice has received uh, originally originally came from Dan. Then what would happen is Bob would verify this transaction, check to see whether it's valid, and then he would take the input state reference for the cash and use it to obtain the, the, the previous transaction. And it just so happens that the, pre that the previous transaction before this swap with the bond for cash with Dan 
uh, was the uh, issuance transaction where Charlie issued the cash to Dan. And then, of course, Bob would verify this transaction. He would check uh, Charlie's signature. And only then, once, once Bob has checked all of the transactions involving the cash back to the issuance transaction from where Charlie originally issued it, can he be confident that this is a valid claim uh, on, on Charlie. And unfortunately, there's, there's no way to avoid this for, for on, on distributed ledger technology. You always have to prove that you can demonstrate an unbroken chain of custody back from the current state of, of that particular asset back to the, the transaction when it was first issued on, onto the ledger. Now, with other technologies such as Ethereum, uh, you, you don't need to do this. And the reason why is because you have all of the data anyway. So you, you don't need to go to your counterparty and, and ask them for some, some other transactions, which you don't which you didn't have before in your storage service. So because you, because data is broadcast to, to all participants, you already, you already have all of the data. So it, it just so happens in Corda, it, it's, a, it's a stark contrast to the other platforms because you don't have any of this data. You have to, you have to ask for it. When, when Bob can verify that this cash is a valid claim on Charlie, then he'll be willing to uh, accept this uh, proposed transaction from, from Alice to settle the IOU. Because now Bob knows that if he ever wants to, he can redeem that cash uh, that cash date uh, with, with Charlie. Verification consensus involves reaching certainty that a transaction and all of its dependencies is signed by all the required peers and satisfies the constraints in the contract code. The important bit here is, is in brackets, so and all of its dependencies. So it's not good enough just to verify the, the transaction being proposed if it includes on-ledger issued assets. Uh, you also need to verify all of its dependencies. But transaction involves uh, an input state, which is, say, a bilateral agreement, which is non-transferable, then verifying dependent transactions is, is less important. First, Well, firstly, it doesn't matter because if you're a party to this bilateral agreement, then it's likely you have all of the transactions involving the, the prior state of, of this agreement anyway. If it's, if it's non-transferable, then there's then there's never a chance that um, there can be a uh, an, an, an issue with, with, with any of the with any of the previous transactions. So it's it's generally a lot easier to reason about agreements than it is about assets on ledger. So re re always remember if you're concerning uh, concerning an asset uh, which is issued on the ledger, then you need to verify all of all of the dependency transactions. This is just uh, reiterating on the previous point. You must if, if you're asking a party to accept a transaction involving an asset, then uh, you have to be able to provide all of the dependency transactions. Th this would happen iteratively. So in the transaction with, with Alice and uh, Bob and Dan, when Dan swapped the bond with Alice for some cash, then uh, he would have had to provide this transaction to, to Alice. Therefore, at the point where Alice sends the, the cash to Bob, Alice already has these two transactions. Of course, she has this one because this is a transaction that involved her, and she has this one because uh, Dan, uh, Dan was, had to provide it to, to, to Alice. So, so then, so then Bob can easily go to um, Alice and request both of these transactions to verify the chain of custody. A, a consequence of this is that there are some privacy concerns. If you have a long chain of uh, transactions, then you could potentially leak a lot of data that uh, to uh, to upstream parties that that may need to verify a, uh, a transaction involving an asset which which which, uh, you, which involved you. It's, it's actually pretty difficult to reason about who gets to see what, what data. Um, so after a transaction has been uh, proposed and, and committed to the ledger, he, he, we, we can never really make any guarantees about who, who may or may not see, see that data. So we, we need some mechanisms in place to preserve the privacy of the other participants on the ledger. And there's uh, a, a, couple of, a couple of things that, that we can do. If you enter into a multilateral agreement uh, that's non-transferable, uh, and it's not circulated wider than the participants involved, then there's no concern really with, with, with privacy because the, the, the only parties typically that would be involved with, a, with an update to that, that agreement would be the, 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 the parties involved. So we, we call these kind of small subgraph uh, tr transactions and typically they, they can remain private. For transactions involving multiple inputs and output states, it is possible to tear off parts of the transaction that you don't want other participants on the ledger to see. So we can do this by structuring a transaction as a Merkle tree and um, providing a partial Merkle tree to, to, to a party that, that you don't want to see the, the, the whole transaction. Well, we, I, I won't go into, into that too much for the purposes of this, this webinar because it's, it's a bit more of an advanced topic, but suffice to say that you can use this technique to uh, hide certain aspects of a, of a transaction. And a good use case of this is 
uh, for when using an Oracle service. You might want an Oracle just to uh, attest to whether some uh, market data is correct or not. Uh, and you would do this by providing them the command that contains the market data. However, you wouldn't necessarily want them to see the input and output states as well. So you can hide those with the partial Merkle tree approach and just show them the, the command. However, using the properties of the Merkle tree, the, the Oracle can still prove, uh, you can still prove to the Oracle that the, the transaction was valid and all the, all the components that, that you say are there are indeed there. Another thing we can do is use key randomization. So instead of using uh, keys that are strongly linked to a real world identity, we can use random, random keys that are generated on a per transaction basis. This effectively anonymizes peers and works relatively well on Ethereum and Bitcoin. Of course, in Corda, there's, there's no there's no reason to publish your public keys as as there are in uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin. So it's actually more difficult to ascribe an identity to uh, a random a random public key. Um, we we can perform what's called state reissuance. So uh, we can we can get an issuer to atomically redeem and then reissue uh, an asset on the ledger. This effectively snips long long state sequences. And so it reduces the amount of data that's that's leaked. Um, lastly, we can use we we can potentially use Intel Software Guard extension. So this is a, a hardware solution whereby the uh, transaction verification engine operates within a, a secure hardware enclave, and all all the transaction data is encrypted uh, encrypted on on disk in storage. But but uh, when it's sent through uh, the, the enclave for, for verification, it's it's decrypted. Uh, so for, for all intents and purposes, the the, the, the CPU from the node operator's perspective uh, operates uh, upon uh, in, encrypted data, and and these these machines can uh, the, the running the the Intel uh, SGX hardware can provide remote attestation to each other that they are running um, uh, code. A, a, a particular uh, a particular program and and they can provide remote attestation over the verification of, of a transaction so it effectively allows uh, for the verification of transactions without uh, needing to actually see the data the, I guess the, the key learning point here is transactions propagate around the network uh, lazily and they're verified on a need-to-know basis so this is just reiterating the point that uh, it's not necessarily that easy to reason about who would eventually see your data However, it's worth noting that the, the privacy story in, in, in Corda is, is one that uh, data should only be sent to a party if it, if it requires it for the purposes of uh, transaction verification or the, the purposes of maintaining its ledger. And it's, it's only sent on a need-to-know basis. So only the minimal amount of data uh, uh, required to be sent is actually sent. And this is in contrast to all the other platforms that encrypt and broadcast all of this data to all participants. So uh, we haven't really touched on uniqueness consensus yet, but there's a couple of slides in, in this webinar. What we're really talking about when we talk about uniqueness consensus is preventing d d double spends. So, so we need uh, certainty that the output states which are created in a transaction are the unique successors of all of the input states referenced by that transaction. We want some assurance that those input states have not been used before. So if you think about it from the perspective of cash, if Alice issues some cash to Bob and then Bob suddenly subsequently uses this cash to pay Charlie and then uses the same cash to pay Dan, then how do we know which which transaction should be should be valid? Which one is the unique transaction? And this this is where notary services, which provide uniqueness consensus, come in. The double spend problem, which is exactly what I've shown on the previous slide, is mitigated by by notary services. And what, what happens is when a state is issued on ledger for the first time, it's assigned a notary service and, uh, that, and that notary ensures that that particular state cannot be double spent or it cannot be used as an input to a transaction uh, more, more than once for the duration of that state's life cycle or that state's life on the, on the ledger. So if it's used, uh, then, then, then that state is marked as historic. And, and the new version of this, the, the, the state is, is created. And, and again, when, when that version of the state is used, it's marked as historic and then a, a new one is created. So it's impossible that you can reuse the same state twice. Uh, uniqueness consensus involves peers reaching certainty that output states created in a transaction are the unique successors to the in, input states referenced by that transaction, such that um, a, a double spend cannot occur uh, on, on the quarter ledger. And in, in the next webinar, we're going to talk a bit about how notary services are implemented.